Oh, Lord, we just thank you, Father. Oh, as our praise goes up, your glory comes down. We receive all you have for us today, God. Oh, as you're touching your people in this house, as you're touching your people as they listen and as they watch, oh, God, you're touching lives right now. Oh, you're stirring faith and hope and hopeless situations. You're stirring, God, restoration to come upon their lives again. You're a stirring, God, a love, God, for themselves and a love for you and a love for one another. Oh, God, there's a stirring, a stirring, a stirring. Oh, we thank you for it, Father. We thank you, God. Bodies being made whole, hearts being healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, God. Oh, we give you the praise. And we give you the glory, Father, right now. In Jesus' precious name. And if you can agree with that, you can say amen, amen. You can go ahead and be seated, and our children will be dismissed at this time. Just go to the back door. There will be some teachers there uh, to escort them over. If this is your first time bringing your children, we do ask for you to go over with them. Make sure that all of the information that they might need on them is filled out. And we thank God for our children. We thank God for all of the ministers that volunteer and work in that area. You know, God is a good, good God. We're going to give you an opportunity to give of your tithes and your offerings. If you need to be served, you're here in the house. Raise your hand. They'll give you an envelope. If you're watching if you're watching online or maybe you're going to watch later or tune in on the podcast, you can go to mypassion.church, click on the Alex City Campus, and there's an option there for giving, and you'll be able to give safe and secure. You can also give by coming by the church, mailing it, or dropping it off. All of that information is on our website, and it is on our Facebook page. Amen? But you can listen to any of the podcasts on mypassion.church on the podcast. You can go back uh, for months, a year. I don't know how long it goes, but they go way, way back. So you can go back at any time and click on all of those archives of the words that have gone forth from this house and listen to them at any time, you know, from your phone, your computer, your car. Um, so I encourage you to do that because sometimes you might just be flipping through a title and that'll be something you need right then for that moment. Amen. So we thank God for that. Also, we want to give you an, a special opportunity. I know that all last month in February we talked about missions. And if you didn't get your faith promise card, please, if you'll raise your hand, the ushers will get one of those to you. Faith promise cards, we need you to get those filled out. Remember, it's a faith promise to God and believe in God provide the seed. But also we want to give you a special opportunity if you could give. Uh, we're wanting to... Uh, uh, hook up with Samaritan's Purse. They're going to be sending a hospital over uh, to Ukraine and to be able to help the people in various areas, and we want to be able to help in that. So if you can do that this Sunday, you can either just write Ukraine on there, hospital. This will go for that solely for that, okay? This would be separate from your missions thing. This is a special project that they're launching, and Dr. V wanted us to help uh, with Samaritan's Purse in that. Yeah, this is, you know, this is an emergency situation. So if you can give towards that, we appreciate it. Um, maybe if you've already done out your envelope or if you want to be sure and, and uh, just write that um, on there separate, we appreciate that so much. Amen. All right. So, Father, we just thank you right now. We just pray. We pray over those, God. That, uh, that have given up their tithes and their offerings, God, and that are giving special seed if they can, Father, to help the people of Ukraine and over there. Father, right now in that whole area, Father, we just pray right now for them. Oh, God, surround them with your love. Surround them with your guidance and your protection. We just thank you, God, in the name of Jesus for souls to be saved and those that do know you, God, help them. Keep them, God, their hearts encouraged one for another and praying, Father, during this time. We just thank you, Father, 
We thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness in the precious, precious name of Jesus. And we thank you for each and every one that is here and watching. God, bless their lives. Help them, God, to serve you and to keep their eyes on you. God, in the name of Jesus and to give them peace that passes all understanding for every area of their life. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise God. As we make our little transition, amen. Hope everyone is doing well. We're glad that you're here in the house. God is so good. I'll tell you, there's lots of places you could be, but thank God you picked the best place to be. Because remember, when we keep this right, okay, then when this is right and priority, then everything out here will line up. But see, when we're not right with God or he's not priority, you know, that's when things really get out of whack. Amen? Amen. We're believing God for a little table. Praise God. I actually seen a table with some chairs and all that. But anyway, so we have more room because the pastor tends to take a lot of room up here. And... Uh, <laughs> We'll blame it on the man, right? Amen. Amen. I defer to my kudzu cousin over here. <laughs> Amen. All right. So our title uh, on this, we're doing a series this month. Um, it's And Your Household. Believing God for your household to be saved and to come into the, into the kingdom, maybe for the first time or to come back. But I'll tell you, this is going to be a powerful, powerful month. And so our scripture for that is in Acts 16.31. And um, it's believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. So you can believe for your households uh, up to a thousand generations. Amen. And, you know, sometimes we think, well, I don't know how. Uh, that could happen, or you don't know all that they're involved, but I will tell you, God does. God does. Um, Sonia, can you pull that Act, T, uh, Act 1631 up in the Amplified by any chance? From There we go. And they answered, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Give yourself up to him. Take yourself out of your own keeping and entrust yourself into his keeping, and you will be saved. Wow. Amen. That's Amen. powerful. Is that the Amplified Bible? Yes. Mm -hmm. I read it out of the Message Bible. It also says uh, this. The, j the jailer says, Sirs, what do I have to do to be saved to really live? And they said, Put your entire trust in the Master Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then you'll live as you were meant to live, and everyone in your household included. Mm -hmm. Father, we just thank you yeah. for your word. Yes. How wonderful your words are. It says the old hymn, beautiful words. They're wonderful words. They're words of life. We thank you today for life being released in this place. In Jesus' name. You know, the first word of the scripture says, believe. Everything in our walk begins with faith. It says, if we can believe all things are possible, your faith can bring salvation to all of your family. Now, believing is absolutely, first of all, a choice. It's a decision. It's not based on feelings. It's not based on emotions. It's not doesn't even really have to believe on, uh, have to depend upon circumstances or situation, all the facts, those types of things. So it's a, it is a act of the will, yeah. is a choice, it is a decision to believe. And he says, it says here, everything in our walk with God begins with faith. And we know that faith comes by hearing. You know, uh, if God said it, it has to happen. 
No, we don't make it happen because if God said it, his purpose, uh, he's speaking his purpose, but also within that promise when God says there's provision, there's the provision of his plans and his power that will make that happen. It's not our faith and our goodness and our ability to talk people into or out of or for us to do for ourselves, as uh, the Amplified Bible just said that really, really well. Uh, but it begins with believing that God is able. And if God says it, say this with me, say it has to happen. Why, ha, why is that? Because God said it. Yes. Now, will it happen? That depends on whether or not we will believe mm -hmm. that he is able to make it happen. And we'll stay in agreement with him as he makes that happen. Yes. See? Now, he goes on to say, if you can believe, all things are possible. You know, Jesus said in one place, he said, I refuse to he said, I refuse to bring the, the narrowness, the limitedness of my experience to the situation. I choose instead to look at the greatness of God and the, and the unlimitedness of his person and his power. See, a lot of times all things is we limit that to the narrowness of how we uh, have experienced life, uh, how um, how that uh, uh, how our family looks right now or reacts to us, how we can't figure out that there's a way. If you're going to walk in the miraculous, you forget about mm -hmm. bringing the narrowness of your experience of how, because it's not by might, it's not by human effort, it's by the power of God's Spirit. It's the person of God. See, and boy, I'll tell you, the word to this house is miracles and healings and restorations and divine prosperity. What, what greater prosperity could you have or I have in our life that us and our house would be saved? There's no greater miracle than the rebirth. There's no greater thing in this earth than salvation. There's no greater th thing in this earth than people coming in, connecting in a relationship with God that's real. It's not religious, that's real. Amen. We have to cast our cares on Jesus and trust him to work. Trust him to work. Mm -hmm. Cast our cares. You know... Uh, I just want to say real mm -hmm. quick here, it's not your or my job to save our family. Mm -hmm. We're to pray for them and then we give them to Jesus. Give them to Jesus. So if you find yourself overwhelmed or fretting and worrying over a loved one, mm -hmm. yeah, or frustrated, then you're not believing God and you mm -hmm. haven't given them to God. Yeah. So it's not your job to change them. Figure it out. You know, or figure out how God's going to do it. You yeah. know, it's just your job to pray and mm -hmm. then give them over to God. Frustration is not faith. I said frustration is not faith. Frustration is not faith. Amen. And it's not, cannot be cloaked as, well, I have this burden from the Lord. Jesus isn't frustrated. Amen. You ever been frustrated with me? Sure you have. <laughs> but you're too, you, but kindness, loving kindness. See, amen. When you get in faith, the frustration goes away. You care, you give the care, the worry, the concern, of even the frustration. You know, it's a difference between praying about people and praying for people. You may be praying about, well, that's not right. They're not right. That sin offends me. It, it frustrates me. It doesn't frustrate or offend God. He dealt with it once and for all in the sacrifice of Jesus by the mercy of God. He gave grace and space for them to change and he always believes the best. Yes. Yeah. Amen. So he prays for people. He's not praying about people. It's a difference of 
when you're saying, well, I'm praying about that. I'm praying about their circumstance or their situation, you know. Why don't we go to the root instead of just always, you know, getting deceived and distracted by the fruit? Well, I just don't like what they do. Well, what they do is out of who they be. But only God can change who they be. He starts at the root. You know, and Wednesday night we had prayer here and, and good Lord, just corporate prayer. We just really felt like the, the one word was f a, about a turning. God turning hearts. God turning minds. God turning circumstances, situations. Yeah. I still believe that this, that in our family, you know, that God got the worst one first. And if he can get me, surely he can get them. Oh, I'm glad I'm not like them. They're way worse than me. Wow. Take you off the list because God's not going to be able to use you. You're just judging. You're religious. You need to go to the car, sit a while. Because all you're going to do is pray about them. You're not going to pray for them honestly. You know, oh, authentically. You know. When you're tempted to judge somebody, and we are, aren't we? That's the mark of religion. And, you know, we judge. Jesus said it over and he said, don't judge. Because we tend to judge them by ourselves. Well, no, I'm judging them, their fruit according to God, you know. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, God is the judge. He is the judge, amen. He said you'll know them by the fruit. He didn't say judge the fruit. We added that. He said, you'll know them by the fruit. He didn't say, judge the fruit. I'm a fruit inspector. I have been authorized. Just go to the car. Sit a while. Amen. Roll the windows down because you need some breeze to blow through your hair. Cool your jets a little bit. No, he, listen now, seriously. You know, when we judge, we tend to judge you know, and this is natural and normal to the human condition because we like to lord over people. We like to feel that we puff ourselves up in pride. You know, well, I'm bigger, I'm better, I'm greater, I'm smarter, I'm wiser, I'm more talented. You know, I'm glad I'm not them. Well, you know, we are them. We're all in the same condition. Sin is a condition, but it's fixable. But you can't fix it, and I can't fix it for ourselves or for anybody else. But Jesus has already fixed it. I want to share how faith has made a difference uh, in, uh, uh, made all the difference in our life. You know, I'm glad people loved the hell out of me. When all I knew was hell, just raised hell, spoke hell, lived hell. But you know, God just loves the hell out of you. I've had pe I had one guy, Bobby Brown, in my life. You know, I was mean to him and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And he was a powerful witness, and he just loved the hell out of me when I gave him hell. He just loved the hell right out of you. Amen. People need the hell loved out of them. I remember, uh, um, um, you know, this is a radical life, guys. It's a radical life change. You know, your family sees you, knows you, you know, in one way. But when Jesus changes you, it's going to look very radical and fanatical to them. We got saved and then we got, you know, um, you know, we end up getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And we were in the denominational church we come from denominational backgrounds you know pretty good heathens we were in between but anyway long and short of it uh, our little girl is at three years old at that time and uh, she crawled up on we have one of those old in the south you know, it's like a pie cupboard it's a hutch so to speak and we had one in that old shack we was living in it went with the shack. We didn't own it. <laughs> but uh, she crawled up there. Sandy kept glasses or plates up in the upper part of it. She pulled the chair over there and climbed up there, as three-year-olds do, you know, three or four. And uh, 
we had a concrete uh, slab floor with old tile that was breaking up and stuff. And uh, uh, anyway, she missed the chair. She fell down flat on her back, bumped her head and all, screaming. Well, we're on the telephone. My my mom, uh, well, 1,500 miles away up north, was we're talking on her phone. She heard the whole thing, and I took Liz in the uh, uh, in the bedroom because she was just screaming. And mom's going to sand still on the phone. She said, "You know what's happening?" She said, "Well, the baby just fell off the pie covered, and she's screaming." So I took her uh, in the bedroom, laid her on the bed, and I remember, "Listen, uh, you know, all things are possible." Even if you don't know what you're doing, all things are possible with God. I remember telling God, I said, you know, uh, I don't know anything about this, but inside I heard this this word, I'll bind up that which was broken. I don't even know if I ever read that in the Bible. I had, we're new Christians. I hadn't read through the Bible. Was, I didn't you know, know anything, but I heard that just as clear as if, you know, someone was speaking that to me. And I rolled her over on her tummy, laid my hands on her back, now listen, you know, did my denomination believe that? No, but I believed it. I believe Jesus could do anything. I saw that he was a healer. I don't know nothing about it. I told him I don't know nothing about this. And rolled her over on her stomach, laid my hands on her back, and said those words. Said, I said, you said you would bind up that which was broken. That baby instantly, instantly went from screaming and writhing in pain, rolled over. She said, it's gone, Daddy. I'm a, it's gone. I mean, just that quick. That's a gift of healing. When nobody knows what they're doing except God, that's a gift of healing. But we have the gifts of the Spirit. Well, you know, long story short, that led to, um, you know, mom's, you know, since I brought her back out, she said, she okay? I said, yeah, and all that. Well, uh, I don't know if it was that call, phone call or follow-up phone call. I said, you need to take her to the doctor. She needs to get x-rays. You need to, you know, which is common sense normal stuff you know said oh she's all right you know dr jesus healed her well about a week later her mom <laughs> and her a dear family friend showed up at the house now under the guise that they were bringing kyle our other baby a bed but really the truth be known as we sat around the table uh um you know, and visited, they wanted to know all about this crazy stuff we're involved in. They they literally said, Mom called Marie and said, listen, these these kids are involved in a cult. Uh, I've got to go to Alabama. You know, God will get you. Signs and wonders are not just for you. So they showed up uh, with the bed, you know committed their lives well remember mom has suffered with suffered with migraine headaches she had one she came and went to bed because she's worried you see a lot of time fear and worry and all that she had it'll 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 short circuit the cir the circuit the uh the fuse box well lissa the little girl our little girl that had been healed <laughs> prayed for my mom and god healed mom <laughs> Now that God has your undivided attention, we're sitting at the uh, table, and both Marie and uh, our family friend and mom gave their heart to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Faith in God. Simple trust. We didn't know nothing. Still don't know nothing according to what God knows, but you know, all things are possible. Do not, don't limit God to what you know and understand or your own experience or anybody else's. That God have a way of connecting the dots and saving your house. And one by one, isn't that right? Your family and my family has come into the kingdom of God. Amen. And so that's why we have to live a life that tells the story. Mm. You know, because sometimes you might not get the opportunity to maybe, yeah. you know, share a scripture or tell a testimony. But you've got a lot of family mm -hmm. and friends that are watching your life. So we've got to always be pointing them to Jesus, not just by what we say, but by what we do, mm -hmm. because they are watching. It's by the life that we live and by faith in our going you know, and look, and, and so in all of our case, you know, all of our family lived 16, 15, 1600 miles away. So we had to begin to pray, God, 
send someone across their path yes. to witness to them because we've prayed for them, we've believed for them, we've given them to you, and then we're going to be faithful to witness to others, mm -hmm. to other families' families, because we know now you're going to be faithful to send somebody to our family because we may not see them, we may not talk to them, but we had believed for all of them. So, you know, sometimes you, you know, your family may be too far away or maybe your family has clearly told you they don't want to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. And especially when it comes to God. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fine. You just say, okay. You put their name down, believe God that they're saved, and then say, thank you, God, for the people you're going to send across their path that they, will, that they hear, will listen to. That they will hear. See? And then God will reward you with your faithfulness as you witness to others. So it's by the life that we live. It's by our words. And it's how we deal with times in life. You know, they're watching. And especially if they're not saved, you know, even in all of what's going on in the world in the past couple of years, by what do you say? How do you believe? Do you, have you been fearful? Have you gotten hateful? Have you gotten judgmental? You know, have you quit God? Have you quit praying? Have you quit going to church? They're watching, see, because they're looking to see, is this real? Yeah. Is it really real? Because they're watching to see what you do. So remember, they're watching us and how we deal with things in life. You that know, says the tough times. You know, we're in tough times mm -hmm. right now. During times of trouble, people are looking to. They're turning. They're turning to someone or, or somewhere. You know, and uh, it's times like this that God. During times of trouble, people. We all are probably much more receptive because we're looking for a truthful answer. And hopeful. hopeful. And some hope. Absolutely. You know, Paul and Silas were beaten and unjustly imprisoned, yet they worshiped God. People are watching mm -hmm. our lives, especially your family. Mm -hmm. Those that have maybe gotten away from God or those that don't know God, they're watching to see are you consistent? Doesn't mean you're perfect. Doesn't mean that you don't, you know, mm -hmm. crumble and fall apart sometime, but you don't stay that way. Yes. You might fall down, but you rise back up better. Yeah. And you are showing mm -hmm. hope. You're living that this thing is real. You know, the yeah. prisoners were listening and watching what they did, just like our family is watching and listening mm -hmm. to what we do. Mm -hmm. And that is so critical. And Denny, aren't uh, aren't people more important than the program? You know, during times like sometimes your dreams might be delayed. They were they were in trouble, you know, uh, with Jesus, and you could say s to some degree because they were believing in Jesus and following Jesus. You know, you're not going to miss trouble, but He's going to be with you. Yeah in trouble but I always remember you know that people are more important than the program you know we all have programs don't we you know we all have our own measurements but God's measurement you know is that that we're no stronger than our weakest link are we we're no greater than the least among us are we isn't that true we're no you know, we're never any greater than when our hearts are humble and our knees are bent. And we care about, uh, you know, I don't have a prop here, but, you know, anything. Just imagine that anything that's broken, you know, and you don't want it to be destroyed. You, very, you handle that so much more carefully. You don't want it to be broken to the place where the pieces are separated, so you kind of scotch it up and work you know and you take extra care where that's concerned let me tell you something you can just look all around here including you you are broken i'm broken people that are out there in the world are broken your family's broken friends are broken there there there's brokenness so that means we must handle that not religiously and harsh but compassionately and carefully we're more careful when something is broken than when it's whole and even if people are whole you know don't break people don't be harsh and hard with people you know god forgive me for the times boy i'll tell you like i said when you 
get closer to God, you also, things come close that you may be hard, may be hard for you to look at about yourself. You know, I find myself in a constant state of repentance over, God, I wish I'd done better. Some stuff I can't straighten out until I get to heaven. God, help me not to hurt people, but to help people. You know, I, we went by, I went to the farm this morning. There's just two little words on the Walgreens, and I thank God for Walgreens. <laughs> and all it said was, you know, usually they got the special up there, you know, milk, two ninety nine dollars gallon. I don't know what it is now. It might be five ninety nine, dollars yeah. you know free COVID shots. It's a helpful, so it's a sign. But this morning, you know, it said, be kind. Just be kind. Loving kindness. Just be kind. And you know, as, as they were in there, they could have chose to be bitter, mm. to be mad, mm -hmm. and to begin to mumble and grumble and mm. blame everything yeah. and everyone but instead they worship God and they worship their way out, but they also brought a people with them because they were watching their reaction. Yeah. You know, when I think about, you know, in our lives, when we first got saved, now for us, it's for different for everybody, when we first got saved, we were in the Baptist church and they preached a lot about hell, mm -hmm. you know, and the worm dieth not and the fire and, you know, all I could think when we finally got saved, to be honest, it was because I sure didn't want to be with no worm <laughs> and I didn't want to be in the fire. <laughs> yeah. So when we finally did get saved, it was like, oh, you know, I, that was my main thing. I just didn't want to go there. There was you know? a little twist on the fear of the Lord. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, we had, you know, the Lord sent several couples in our life, and I'll just make it real brief. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what they be, what we begin to see, see, we were watching. Watching. And there was different couples that came across our lives that, you know, uh, they were happy and joyful and, you know, but yet we knew they, they were struggling. Mm -hmm. And here we were struggling, but it was like, but gosh, they're happy and they have peace, you know. So we begin to hang around them. Well, then they begin to have us over and we'd have cookouts. We'd sit outside and just, you know, eat and, and around the bonfire. Then they'd begin to just pray and, you know, and they just, you know, love on us and loved on us and loved on Shared us, you know. They us. didn't sit there and pull out their Bible when we came over. They didn't mm -hmm. preach to us. Any, but if we had a question, well, I don't understand mm -hmm. this because we were new. Well, why do they do this in church? And he said that, and I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. They'd answer it to the best of their thing. They helped us. But they were always, you, you want to go fishing. Come over. Come on. We'll go fishing. Come on over. We'll have hamburgers. But what they were doing was loving us. And discipling us mm -hmm. and helping us so that we could do the same thing to somebody else. Shout out to Jeff. And I'll and tell yes. you, that was such a, you know, that was there in the Baptist church. And then when we went on to the full gospel Pentecostal church, God gave us another couple. Mm -hmm. And that's all they did. They just say, come over, come over. Because was, now there was another whole new level of stuff. We didn't understand why they did that and, you know, why they, you know, emphasized this or how they did that. But it was always just come and they just helped us. They just yeah. loved us. They yeah. just showed us life with Jesus yeah. could be good. That life with Jesus could be happy and full of joy. Didn't mean you didn't get into stuff. Didn't mean you didn't go through stuff. But you didn't have to go through it alone. And that was the most important thing yeah. because we didn't understand that. You know, people need our understanding. People need us to know the love of God so we can go give the love of God. But it's so important, and it's more important sometimes just to help people in their walk with God, just yeah. to be their friend, yeah. just to show them the love of God. And the, they don't need you to invite them over for a seminary. Yeah, and they know? <laughs> Jeff, Jeff and Missy Helms are the couple you're talking about who really took us up in that second phase. And... Uh, I don't know if you ever thought about this, but our reputation preceded us in that because you think about the love that had to cover that our, our, my first interaction with the Helms family was that I shot Forrest Hogg. Remember that? And Mr. Helms came up and got the meat out of the bathtub. You remember that? Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about, but, uh, <laughs> you know, imagine this, say, you know, Who's that new couple in church? Oh, that's the one that killed Forrest Hogg. <laughs> oh, that's the guy. <laughs> well, I hope I don't ever cross him that, you know, you get on his property, he'll just shoot you. 
the old Bruce probably would have. I shot the boy's hog. He was in my garden, you know, and then then uh, got convicted by the Holy Ghost. And the couple you're talking about, Blake and Linda, I called Blake. I said, Blake, you can come up here. I got some hog meat for you. I said, he goes, you do? I said, yeah. I said, I said there's, a, there's a hog running around, got my garden. I shot it. He said, uh, Bruce? Oh. Uh, he said, I believe that might be Miss Ham's hog. I said, I don't care whose it was. It's mine now. You come up and help me. He goes, yeah. I said, you want some? He goes, no, I don't believe I want it. <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, he was helping me. He goes, I, I got to feeling bad, you know. And I said, what should I do? He goes, I think I'd call Mr. Helms. He said, it's still his hog, <laughs> even though it's dead. I said all that. To, that was the jump from Blake and Linda to Missy and Jeff, and 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 they both just covered it with love, you know. Now the old Bruce, I didn't know, you know. Uh, I mean, the sin was that hog was eating my family's groceries, so I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> Possession is nine-tenths of the law, even if the rascal's cut up and quartered and floating in the bathtub in cold water. <laughs> so who are you? I shot. I'm the guy that shot your brother's hog. Why don't you come over for hamburgers? <laughs> Go ahead. Lord Jesus. Amen. So, see, people are watching. Even when we mess up, you know, they're, they're, they're watching, you know, how we handle it. But also, though, too, we're watching how people respond to us. Yes. You know, and that made more of an impact on our yeah. life than anything because their love was real. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. How much more is God's love for you and for your family yeah. that no matter where you've been or what you've done, God loves you and he loves your family. No Amen. matter what. The next point is the Holy Spirit desires to reveal Jesus to your family. You know, obedience to the Holy Spirit's voice always affects those you love. The saints of old called him the hound of heaven because like a hound on the trail of someone, the Holy Spirit is after the souls of your loved ones. He works in their circumstances to draw them to Jesus. Don't go by what you see. You know, go trust that God's working even when you can't see him working. And it says that is why we must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading. Sometimes we should not fix things for them. And then you just, you know, you, you, because we'll get them to look into to us, you know, rather than to look into God. And it's uncomfortable sometimes to see, you know, uh, uh, your loved ones go through tough times, see. But the tough times, the troubling times in our life are the times when we're willing to turn, yes. when we're more sensitive and more apt to turn. And like Sin just said, so we point them to Jesus. As he's been the answer for our life, then he'll be the answer for yours. And this is not a pretend life where, everything, where there's no trouble. You know, you're either going into trouble, you're in trouble, or you're coming out of trouble and about to go into trouble yes. again. Yes. Amen. Thank you for checking on the sound, fellas. Um, and if we listen, the Holy Spirit will speak to us about our loved ones. Yeah. He may tell you to call them or let them know you love them. He may direct you to pray in a certain way or for a certain thing in their life. He may instruct you to do something for them. We just simply need to learn to know his voice and obey. Love will know what to do. Love will always tell you what to do. You know, I think about, uh, Phil, we had a conversation, you know, and, and uh, we want want to go into detail of that and you know I remember Phil has said certain times he goes I'm just done with that and he said and then the Lord said I want you to help him <laughs> and Phil just cried with the compassion of the Lord he said what am I going to do I'm going to do what God said to do that's what you're going to do that's what you always do amen see and you know what love wins out on that how many times have, you know I tell you the Lord Way should have quit a long time on me, Phil. Should have just give up, you know. Uh, but the batter, yeah. 
as bad as I've been, as bad sometimes decisions, choices I make, that's when he just gets gooder and gooder and gooder because he loves more and more and more. When I, when I need uh, him uh, more, that's when, when he loves me the same all yeah. the time. Yeah. But he lets me know that more measure of his love. Yeah. And love doesn't just cover. Love conquers. Love never fails. Amen. Never fails. Amen. So how's your family going to be saved? Just love them. Yeah. Love them. The love of God will prevail. Amen. Stop praying about them. Pray for them. Let love pray. Let love flow through you. Yeah. Amen. How do I know how to do that? Let me help. Because sometimes people just don't know, you know. All right, you start out, you're very troubled. You're frustrated. You're upset. You're offended. You're just shocked, you know. Uh, your sensibilities are, you know, how could they? You know, that's all right. That's, that's the start of other tongues where you cannot voice <laughs> articulate words. <laughs> Amen. You know, and you just stay with what you don't bring it to God. You pray through it. How do I know I'm through? I have peace and joy. You know, uh, I'm begin. The love of God begins to flow into me and then through me. See, are you listening? Take it to the Lord in prayer. All right. You know, until you've taken them to the Lord till they're on the altar see and and the love of God is prevailing then see you're walking in victory not just for you but victory for them right. amen that's, that's what they call partner partner in with Jesus mm -hmm. you need to partner with Jesus mm -hmm. for the souls of yes. your family amen you know first we got to be in faith you know you got to believe that if you've prayed you know you've uh uh, laid hold of that promise in the word of God you know then you've laid hold of that for your loved ones then you give them over to God you know uh, to be in prayer you pray partner for God you don't all the time be telling them what they need to do what they haven't done how you know this and that or you know. God what he needs to do that's right or what, <laughs> telling God what he needs to do in their life you need yeah. to just say Lord I'm believing for them to be saved I'm believing for them to come to you because let me tell you mm -hmm. prayer sets the atmosphere prayer opens up now an avenue for God to move in their life yeah. you need to have the atmosphere set up and how does it get set up by prayer mm -hmm. and like pastor just said in love not just mm -hmm. your love but the love of God Ask God to love your family through you. And like he said, that doesn't mean trying to fix them or fix every bit of trouble that they're in. Sometimes they need to walk through this stuff because then who are they going to go to? If you keep pointing them to him, that's who they're going to go to. You don't want them coming to you. You want them going to Jesus. But in love, not just your love, but you need to tell them about the love of God. Because sometimes they'll say, but I've done this and I've done that. You need to assure them. That's all right. God can handle that. It's the love of God uh, that's, you know, it's more than just a feeling or an emotion. Yeah, sure. God's love is real, yeah. and it's unconditional. Mm -hmm. And if they can receive it, but first they're going to have to see it through you and through me. Let me tell one more story. A lot of people in full gospel circles would be familiar with the name Smith Wigglesworth. I think Smith Wigglesworth uh, was one of the greatest uh, preachers of faith. He was an illiterate plumber. I mean, God, uh, he, before he got saved, he, didn't, he couldn't read or write. Uh, um, but I guess he was a good plumber, but he's a mean cuss. And uh, how do you know he's mean? Well, the story's told. Uh, the accolades for him, you know, I mean, the proofs of his... Uh, faith in God is a tremendous man uh, of faith. One of the fathers of the faith in modern day history is I would raise like 18 people from the dead. I mean, just radical faith guy. And uh, uh, but the backstory to that was Smith's wife was a church going woman and a believer, and uh, uh, things came to a head in uh, that. Uh, uh, that they were arguing about, you know, her going to church, and she she went anyway. He locked her out. 
all night. And, and he opened the door in the morning. She was asleep. Gets the door, fell backwards, got up, never said a word, you know, dust herself off, went and cooked him a big breakfast. You know, just treated him lovingly and kindly and won the man to Jesus. A lot of people don't don't know that story, you know. It's pretty mean to lock your own wife out because she went to church. Are you listening? Amen. Love won out with that. And you would think, you know, boy, I'll tell you what, you lock me out, I'm going straight to the gun cabinet, get a 12-gauge shotgun, and you're going out, Jack. I've put up enough with your heathen self. No, dust herself off. Are you listening? Spent the night on the porch. Well, I'll guarantee you she was putting some prayer down. And then the next day, I mean, God had given her a strategy. And God got that boy. And boy, what a boy he got. A radically, fanatically changed, changed the face uh, of, uh, of the kingdom of God here on the earth. You know, God would get the worst one. You know, but who gets the credit for that? That old, I don't even know her name, but that old boy, that old mean plumber's wife. Amen. That's a powerful girl. He raised people from the dead, but she got that dead man born again <laughs> through what she did. Amen. Amen. As, now, as Pastor Ron she could have, she could have nagged him. Yes, she, <laughs> she loved him. She loved him. As Pastor Ron comes in Amen. closing, I'll give you some action points. Amen. You need to begin to write down the names of your loved ones who need Jesus. We're going to give you, uh, the ushers are going to hand out some papers at the end, our prayer list, and then we have a prayer box up here uh, on the uh, altar. They just need to put it up higher up there if you don't see it. But anyway, write all those names down. You can either do it today or bring it back next Sunday, and then we're going to have you put it in that box. But write down the name of your loved ones who need Jesus. And then from this moment on, you make a decision to believe for their salvation. Not, you know, praying, manipulating prayers over how God's going to do it. Mm -hmm. You just believe that they are going to get saved. And mm -hmm. if you can't witness to them, then God's going to send somebody to them that can. Yes. And that means then you're going to refuse to listen to fear. You're going to refuse to listen to doubt. You're going to refuse to listen to all, you know, and listen, sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. So you might all of a sudden start finding out as soon as you write your name, their name down on that paper, you're thinking, oh, my God, now they're worse than ever. Hmm. You know, doesn't matter what they say or don't say to you or what you yeah. hear from another family member. Oh, have you heard what so-and-so is doing? Are they saying this or they're, you know, cursing God? Don't give in. To, it's all, That's all right. That's not the way it's going to stay. They're uh, going to come. Let to me say this. Uh, the, the, the church world says all hell broke loose. You know, and 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 boy, that's on the negative thing. Going, you ought to be rejoicing, saying hell's breaking loose. <laughs> God's loving the hell out of them. Hell's breaking loose. Don't be moved by those, you know, uh, antics and all that kind of stuff. God is working. It's always, always darkest just before the dawn. It's always. When the devil gets stirred up, that's because God's, God's running him out. See, you're right at the point of breakthrough. Stay with it. Stay with them. You know, God loves them. Love them through it. So once you write their names down and you call their names out in prayer, but now you're thanking God as you're praying. Thanking you're God. You're setting that atmosphere yeah. up for God to be able to move. So now when you pray over yeah. them, now your faith is changed and you're saying, thank you, Lord, for them coming to you. Thank you for their salvation. Yeah. Thank you that they're coming back to you in the name of Jesus. Let me share Amen. something right there, Sin. I remember listening to a tape by, uh, message by Kenneth Hagin. And uh, it was his mother's, it was his Uncle Bud, I think is what he called him. But it was his mother's brother. They prayed for him for years. And he said he was a church going man. Married a woman, got out of church. And, you know, the family got off base and different things. And they prayed for 20, you know, decades over him, 20-something years. And just seemed like, you know, nothing happened. And he said the Lord told him one day he was praying over him. He said, God save Uncle Bud. And he said the Lord just 
spoke to him and said, don't you think, he said, that I want to save him more than you want him saved? He said, I've already done all the work where that's concerned. He said, when are you just going to get in faith and quit asking me to do something that I've already done, already made provision for? He said, when are you going to get in faith? And he said, and, and just start thanking me for his salvation. And he said, so I just said, well, Lord, you know, I thank you. You, you, you know, you know how to get this done. I thank you. Uh, that uh, uh, you've already done what needs to do. And he said, within two weeks, it was Uncle Bud's neighbor came over and asked Uncle Bud to go to church. And, and uh, he said, you know, uh, uh, he'd asked him many times, but that particular time, uh, Uncle Bud told the story after that particular time, you know, it just struck him. He said, you know, I think I will. I think I will. Went to church, got saved. Two weeks. 20 years, two weeks. 20 years, two weeks. When you get in faith, things happen, son. You know. But what, whatever. The Lord knows how to get it done. But the thing, it goes, to, it goes, when you pray, believe that you have received. If you ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us and we know we have the thing. You don't have to beg for it. You just say, Lord, I thank you. You, want, you promise that you, if we believe, we would be saved. But we're believing not just us. You promise that our family would be saved. So we believe that from this moment on, see, we make the decision. We're going to believe for their salvation. That means that we're not going to look at circumstances. We give it over to God. But also, we're going to thank you. Lord, you're at work. Lord, you're there. there. They're closer now that you you know how to bring them in, and we thank you, you know. And when you pray for them, you start seeing them saved. Start seeing them that way. Start seeing them serving God. Uh, how different they'll be, see, with Jesus in their, in their heart. I hope that helps somebody, because maybe some of you have been praying for years, old people. Let's shift it into a different gear. Let's move it into the faith realm, see. And be at rest at, in, at being blessed where, you know, God said, he blessed them saying, believe you'll be saved and your household. Amen. And boy, I'll tell you what now, you know, I'm glad some people stood in faith for me. Stood in faith for me. Amen. Until I was standing there at the cross and gave my heart to Jesus. Amen. There are people right now you know, uh, that uh, are listening, you know, that need Jesus and that are ready to receive Jesus. People have prayed for you. You've tried all of the other things. You know, no one needs to ask you how that's working out for you. See, you need to know in your heart things are right this way. And all this other stuff will get taken care of. Just come to Jesus. Let's come to him right now. It's a simple thing. It's a simple, simple thing, but it's a heart thing. I'm going to say some words that will express our heart to the Lord. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that he came and he lived, he died, he was crucified, God buried him, but God raised him from the, the death, raised him from the dead, it, the the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Somebody had to die. So Jesus said, I don't want them to die, to be separated from God forever. I'll take their place. I'll pay the penalty so that they can be connected to God forever and be reborn. And if we believe that in our heart, Jesus did something for you that you could never do for yourself. But the Bible also says and confesses with their mouth, Jesus, you are the Lord and you're my Lord. You're going to be my boss. You're going to be my master. You're going to drive my car. You're going to lead me and I'm going to follow you. If you're ready to do that, you don't have to know everything. You just have to know that you're ready for that, a change. And the greatest change that will ever take place. Let's pray that prayer together with the mama. Jesus, come into my heart. I'm ready. I'm really ready. And this time, I give all of my life to you. 
And I'm going to take you at your word. I need you to do a work in my life. I can't change myself. But I know you can change me. And if you will, as you do, I will. And I will do the following. I'll follow you. I'll do what you say. I will follow you, Jesus, all the way, every day, the rest of my life. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, I can guarantee the greatest thing in this life. It's not a million dollars. It's not a fine, fancy car. It's not, you know, uh, all of the trappings of what the world calls wealth, the greatest thing in this life. It's to settle the eternal life. It's to get connected with God. It's to have Jesus in your heart. It's to have your sins forgiven. To have the peace with God and the peace of God that all is forgiven. All is cleansed. From now on, everything will change because I have been changed. Nothing greater, nothing greater than that. And it's a simple decision and a heartfelt prayer. Amen. Congratulations. We'll help you in any way that, uh, that we can. Uh, we're here. We invite you to come. Um, email us, uh, text us, or the, you know, all the different ways to contact, contact us. We have material that's free. We'll send it to you. Let us love on you. Let us, you know, well, you don't know how I've been. I've been a hellion. We'll just continue to love the rest of the hell out of you. Amen. But you got a good start with a new heart. The rest of it should be easy, right? Amen. Are you finished? We're done. Just listen to the Holy Spirit. Call their names out to God in prayer and listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, let, why don't you pray and dismiss us, Mama? Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, God, today for your word. We thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, that there's been hope, God, planted in our hearts, God, new hope, God. We thank you, God, for the faith that has risen up in our hearts for our family and to believe for our loved ones. We thank you, God, today that in great expectation that yeah. all of our family, Father, near and far come we'll to you in the name of Jesus. And I I'll thank you, God, today for those that maybe gave their heart to you for the mm -hmm. first time. We thank you for that new life, God. Yes, God. And we thank you for healing uh, bodies, healing broken hearts, God, mending spirits, God, that just have been so hurt. Mm -hmm. And we just thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. In the precious name of Jesus, God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Listen till the next time our prayer for you, as always, is that you would have a heart that's at rest, peace with God, because you know and are coming to know in a greater way how very, very blessed you are. Amen.